All right, so I recently bought a Green Mountain Grill and I was talking to my friend, Big John, from John Eats Cheap, and we were realizing that there wasn't any videos about doing a rotisserie chicken or using a rotisserie for the Green Mountain Grill. So upon opening the box uh, that comes with it, I think it was like $59, I think, for the rotisserie, uh, we have the, uh, the motor. You've got a couple of brackets that's gonna go on either end of the grill. You've got this, this came in two pieces. This is the skewer stick. You've got your meat claws, they're called. And then also a counterbalance because you have to weight your chicken. And then that's a sleeve collar. I'm not exactly sure what that's for, but we'll find out here in just a couple minutes. All right, so now we're getting ready to get going with uh, getting the actual rotisserie put into the Green Mountain Grill. You lift it up, and I'm gonna say right now, if you get the rotisserie accessory, the instructions are horrible. They're not very well written, and the pictures, you can't really even see what's going on. So hopefully this will help some people who do have some questions. Uh, there are two different brackets that you need to put on. There's a, a longer one and a shorter one. They both have notches in them. And the shorter one goes on the inside. There's just a slot that's right here on the side, right there. I'll show you everything in just a second here. We'll get it all done. And then the longer one, goes on the side, right underneath the chimney. You gotta get that There's a little door there that needs to slide to the side. It's right underneath the chimney and you're hooking it up like this. Okay, now, as far as the motor goes, you're gonna see that there's a, a switch. The switch goes on the bottom and there are slots on the back here that this slides into. And that sets up right like that. As far as your skewer stick, this is gonna come in two separate pieces. You just screw it together, it's very easy. This is your collar, and it's almost like a ball bearing for it to move on inside here. So you're gonna to wanna to put it on here and just kind of snug it up at first because you're gonna to have to adjust for the, for the size of the grill for that. This is your counterbalance. And your counterbalance goes on after you put the after you put this on. And this is going to be, when you get your, your meat on there, uh, we'll, we'll show you in just a minute. Now comes meat hook number one and meat hook number two. And they're facing in together like this. I'm just gonna kind of snug these up just a little bit. I'll see, and then we put it together. Now, when you do this, you're going to want to you're going to have to go into the motor first into the hole and then kind of work it around to where you can get in the other side with the Green Mountain Grill. So it looks like we did set everything up correctly. That's exactly the way it's supposed to go. You've got your collar over here kind of acting as a ball bearing for the, for the spit rod to spin on. You've got your motor over here on the other side. You just firmly put it into that slot. You've got your meat hooks. You've got your counterbalance. Anyway, we're going to go and get our chicken ready and we're gonna get our grill fired up. We're gonna figure out how to counterbalance the, uh, the chicken on the spit, and then we'll see what happens with the Green Mountain Grill rotisserie chicken. So excited for this. Okay, so this should be very interesting because it's something I've never done before. We've got the grill uh, getting warmed up now. We've got everything hooked up with the rotisserie. We've got our, our spit and everything ready to go. These are all loose because we're gonna to have to do some adjustments once we, um, uh, once we get this thing done. So, I've got a five and a half pound chicken, and I believe I was supposed to do it 20 minutes per pound, but I'll look that up for sure before we, uh, before we definitely start it. 350 is what I'm heating the grill to right now. Now, this is what's gonna be weird. I've never done this before. I've never tied a chicken up before. So, if you have a better way of doing it, then uh, feel free to do it that way. I just know that you need to tie up the legs, you bring it underneath here, and then you go around to tie up the wings on the side. So let's just see how this goes and see if we can make this happen somewhat quickly. Touch anything. Here is the skewer. We're going to pull off one of the meat, uh, I can't think of what they're called, meat forks or whatever they called it. I'm gonna put this, uh, tighten this on here, and we're gonna start from the tail and go up to the neck. 
And, and what's going to happen here, I'll turn it sideways so you can see it. We want these, these forks to stick into the bird, to hold the bird. So I just ran it in there. And then you do it from the other end. And stick it into the bird and then tighten these things. Kind of look at it though first and see where it's at on the, uh, see if we can move it down just a little bit because you want it somewhat in the center if possible. Okay. And good and tight. You want the bird to really be held on there. You don't want this thing moving around at all. Okay. And we'll show you how to use the counterbalance here in just a couple of minutes. I learned, I did learn this trick. We're going to use olive oil. We're going to use a little bit of Lowry salt. We're going to use some coarse black pepper. I mean, that sounds good to me. Use a bowl. And that way you can put the bird on it like this. And then you can spin it while you're doing it while you're seasoning it. I'm going to use the, um, the olive oil. Okay. Now, if you look, when I hold the bird like this, if I let it go, it sinks like that. It's going to fly away. It's going to fly away. <laughs> what you want to do is take your counterbalance that's right here and put it at the opposite side of the heaviest part of the chicken. And that keeps your uh, motor from having to work too hard. And that's really not bad, um, I guess. The grill has gotten up to temp now and uh, we are ready to put the chicken on. Got it all set to go. 350 degrees. I know I found so many different recipes for rotisserie chicken, different temperatures, different times. So this is just an experiment. Again, if you have a better idea, post it down below. Um, we're gonna do uh, 18 to 22 minutes per pound at 350 degrees. We're gonna say 20 minutes per pound at 350. It's a five and a half pound chicken. So that's an hour and 50 minutes. Um, so we're just gonna get it going. Here we go. Okay, so we've got that now. Our chicken is turning. Okay, one hour and we'll check it at about 90 minutes or so. You wanna get it to an internal temperature of 165 degrees. That's where you want it to be. So far, so good. We'll see what happens. We'll check back in in just a few minutes. Okay, so we're about 20 minutes in on this and I wanna, I'm gonna make you a note of, a, of an issue that came up. The end of this came out of the motor and the chicken stopped spinning. And what happened was, I'm gonna open it real quick just to show you, that collar right there at the end, you need to make sure that that's within the tolerance to where it'll hold this end into the motor. So you wanna make sure that it's right up against the holder on that end to where there's not much uh, free play in there. So I'm gonna keep just, keep an eye on it and we'll, um, We'll see how that goes. Hopefully that fix is just a small First problem. First of all, I started at four o'clock exactly. It is now seven o'clock and it just now hit temperature. So it takes quite a bit longer than, than uh, what was it? They estimated 22, 18 to 22 minutes a pound. It took longer than that, or I did my math wrong. I'm not sure, but it took about three hours uh, to get it done at 350. I don't know, maybe I should have done it a little bit hotter but we'll see the results here in just a second. Another thing that I just learned, because like I said, this is only like the third time I've ever used this grill. This thing, you you can you have to turn off the spit, but you plug this into the front of the grill and it does your temperature for you. Oh, how cool is that? Now I understand there's a Wi-Fi feature here and stuff that it'll do it to your phone and everything so you can just read it, but when it's on the spit, you can't have the temperature stuck in there all the time. So I haven't, I haven't tried that. I'm gonna try a pork butt this weekend and see. Um, also, I recommend these gloves a lot. This grill is really hot and, and you have to come over here and push that motor in every now and then. I'm gonna be able to fix it with the way that you put the, the collar on the other end of the rotisserie. That's gotta be adjusted a little bit. I also think if I had the, the chicken more in the middle of the spit, 
like more in the center of this glass, but I don't, it's a little bit further to the side. So I had to keep pushing the motor back on and I think I've got it down now, with, but you make the adjustment on that collar to where it's tighter on this end. But the gloves are kind of a must, because it is, it's, it's, it's a hot grill. Um, and I kept having to reach in there and grab the spit and kind of move it in to where I could put it in tightly in the motor. Okay, are you ready to see it? How does that look? 165 degrees of chicken goodness. Rotisserie. 350 degrees and it took three hours to get it done. Here we are with the finished product. Um, I carried it in a bowl just to keep the juices and it was really easy to do with the skewers on it. You just take the whole thing out and slide it out. I do have this end on there wrong. I think it needs to be flipped around and that'll make it stay better with the motor. So keep that in mind that you, that you do that the right way. So you just bring the whole thing in. Again, use these gloves, man, because this whole, this whole project is hot. You just grab the whole skewer and bring it in like that and it's, um, it's much easier to do, but that skewer is hot when you grab it. Um, so I'll just, <laughs> it's pulling the wrong way. Maybe you just do this. Yeah, the string is caught in it, that's why it. <laughs> Cut it. Gail, do you want to come in and try this? waiting for three hours. Three hours. It was worth the wait. Okay. Okay, dig into that. Mm. Yeah. Oh yeah. Super moist. I have no idea how to cut a chicken. I didn't know this. Well is it upside down maybe? Maybe it's supposed to <laughs> Okay so we've had a chance to try a little bit here. I'll do a close up picture of it here in a second. It's super juicy, mm -hmm. but is, does that mean it's greasy or is it just so juicy and so filled with juice? Juicy. We had the skin on it, so is that, but is that good for you or bad for you? Does it matter? Well, you don't eat the skin. The skin right. seals but is all it all the... fat inside there? No, it just seals the juice in. Chickens aren't fat. Anyway, it's, um, <laughs> but the skin is fat. You ever seen a fat chicken? The skin is fat. Oh, well, but that just seals it. I mean, you've got to cook it with the skin on. So. Yeah, it's anyway, good. Anyway, it's delicious. Bon appetit. Yeah, right on.